بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. And to begin. So far, we mentioned about the stories of the prophets and the messengers, that they are the best stories. And we mentioned three reasons why the stories of the prophets and the messengers are the best stories. What are the three reasons? Give me one, Hudayfa. Huh? They are the truest stories. Give me one, Abdul Rahman. The most beneficial and. The best story? Hamza, right? Sufyan, I knew that. They're the, the best stories. Why are they the best stories? Hmm? They're the most beautiful stories. That's a, that's a correct answer. They're the most beautiful. That's half, of a, that's half of one of the three. And Hamza always gives us the other one. They have the greatest impact in captivating people's attention, captivating people, right? Tayyib, Ablag, and they have the farthest reaching effect. They penetrate people's hearts. So if a person really wants to understand this, there are a number of things they have to do. They have to memorize the Qur'an, memorize the stories of the prophets and messengers from the Qur'an. And... When they do that, then they'll see the beauty immediately. And is, even if a person doesn't understand Arabic by memorizing those stories, they immediately see the beauty. But then they have to learn the meanings of what they're reciting. They have to learn the meanings of what they're reciting so that they can understand how they are the uh, truest of stories and the most beneficial of stories and get the benefit from these stories. We mentioned in our second class last week, last Monday, that there were ten wisdoms, ten reasons why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam last. When Allah created the universe, when Allah created the heavens and the earth, the universe, that the last thing He created was Adam alayhi, a salatu wa salam. And we mentioned some reasons for that. Give me a couple. Because the end is always better than the beginning. Save the best for last. Same way of saying the same thing. So that everything will be prepared for Adam before he arrived on earth. Adam is like the master of the earth. And he, meaning that he has mastery and control of the earth. Everything was created for him. To honor Adam, in order to honor Adam, so that Adam would have everything that he needed from the time that he raised his head, took his first breath, and came to life. There's also something that we didn't really go into a lot of detail about that was mentioned in the tenth reason that's important. What did Allah say to the angels when he was telling them that he was going to? create a new species. What did he say? Hamza, what did he say? Inni? Inni ja'inun fil ardi khalifa. I'm going to place a khalifa, a new species that will be many generations. Where? In the? In the what? In the earth. Or on the earth. But after Allah created Adam, and after the angels made sajda for Adam, out of honor for Adam, and after what happened with Iblis happened, Allah said, Ya Adam, uskun anta wa zawjuka al-jannah. O Adam, you and your wife go and live in the jannah. Right? But Allah said that he was going to place this new species where? On the earth. Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, 
This is because Allah knew that he was going to test Adam with sin. And Ibn Qayyim mentions 25 reasons why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed Adam on the earth after putting him in paradise first. After putting him in paradise first. And the reason I want you to write down from the 25 reasons is so that he will be anxious to return back so that he could live in paradise forever. So that he could be so that he would be anxious to return back to the paradise so that he could live there forever. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the earth for Adam alayhi salatu wasalam as a world to be tested, as a world to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there's a world where a person learns to be patient and to be grateful for the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we mentioned the stages of the creation of Adam. And we mentioned, and I missed one of them. So if you have your notebooks and your notes from yesterday and you want to write, if you could squeeze it in there somewhere, we mentioned that there were a number of stages. First Adam was Torab. He was what? It was dirt. Then he was what? <coughs> Tlin. And he, what's, what's the relevance? What's the difference between dirt and clay? The water. Allah created everything out of water. And so Allah put water on the clay. Uh, water on the dirt to turn it into clay. And then what? And then he was formed. Hama'in masnoon. Hama'in masnoon. And he darkened, formed clay. And then... Salsalin kal fakhar. We missed that one. Salsalin kal fakhar. And after clay is formed and molded, it is dried and it's hollowed out. It's hollowed out. The point if you have like a piece of um, pottery and you, if you put your knuckles on it, it has a, makes a hollow sound, right? It makes a hollow sound. This is what is meant. Salsalin kal fakhar called sounding clay. Sounding clay is the clay that when it's dried, it makes a noise. When it's dried, it makes a noise. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala left Adam like that for as long as Allah will to leave Adam. Alayhi salatu wasalam. Allah left Adam without a soul. Tayyib, what happened at that point? Iblis started to size him up. Yatifu bihi. And yatif and yatufu, meaning. Yatifu. And he started to make tawaf around Adam, go in circles around Adam. Right? Look at Adam. Ibn Kathir, he said in his tafsir, that some of the salaf, they said that he went into the mouth of Adam and went through the body of Adam and came out the other end. Right? It's a statement of some of the Salaf, yani some of the early scholars, I believe it was attributed to some of the Sahaba. يَطِيفُ بِهِ يَنْظُرُ إِلَيْهِ And he's looking, investigating about Adam. What is this creature? When he saw that Adam was ajwaf, when he saw that Adam was hollow, some of the scholars they said ajwaf means when he saw his stomach. He saw that Adam is going to be a needy creature. He's not going to be like the malaika that are عُقُولٌ بِلَا شَهَوَاتٍ and they have intellects and they don't have any desires or passions. All they want to do is worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't have any temptations, any desires, anything of the sort. They don't need to eat or drink or have children or anything of the sort. Allah creates them out of light. Tabarak wa ta'ala. So when he saw that this was going to be a creature that had needs, he said what? What did he say? I have already beaten him. Zafir to be. I've already beaten him. And? 
Because he is a creature that cannot control himself. He's a creature that won't be able to control himself. He won't be able to control himself. What does that mean? What do we say, the two things? His desires and his anger. His desires and his anger. Uh, what caused Iblis to look for a way to defeat Adam before Adam was even alive, before he even had a soul? Two things. What are they? Arbeda. Jealousy and arrogance. So he said right here at this moment, the basis for everything that would happen in history of sin and disobedience started right there. Because all sin and all disobedience and even all kufr comes from four things. And those four things are what? Sharma. Arrogance. Jealousy. Anger. And passions, desires, impulses, so on and so forth. Right? That's all one thing. Right? Lust, passions, desires. Tayyib. So the scholars, they said that there are four categories of sins. Four categories of sins. The first category of sins are sins that are done by people where they are, they are called dhunubun malikiya, malikiya, where they are acting like they are kings, where they are playing God, where they act like they are great, and the only one that is great is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like arrogance and self-amazement and these sorts of things. Anything of the sort where a person exalts himself and raises himself up high. Al-Fakhr. Bragging and boasting. Bragging about your lineage. These sorts of things. Bragging about what country you come from. Bragging about how much knowledge you have. Bragging about anything. All of this is from arrogance and from self-astonishment. These sorts of things. It's the first category and these are the most destructive sins and the quickest sins that destroy a person. Then after that, you have what are called الذنوب الشيطانية Satanic sins. These categories are taken from the book The Disease and Its Cure by Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah. Satanic sins. Satanic sins are sins like hasad والحقد يعني والضغائن يعني people having jealousy and holding grudges and harboring hatred for people. These sort of sins are called satanic sins. Satanic sins. Then the third category of sins are al-dhunub al-sab'iyya. Al-dhunub al-sab'iyya, where a person, they're called predatorial sins, where a person is acting like a predatorial animal. What is a predator? Huh? An animal. an animal that hunts, right? An animal when it's hunting, is it, is it happy or is it angry? It's angry, right? It's driven by anger, right? It's driven by anger and frustration, right? It needs to eat, it needs to feed its young. And so it's driven by anger to eating other animals. So these are the sins that come out of what? Come out of anger. They come out of anger. And what's left? What's left? A shahwa. Passions, desires, lust, so on and so forth. These are called a dhunub al bahimiya. Animalistic. Animalistic, animal like sins. Sins that where a person acts like an animal. All they're worried about is eating, drinking, and using the bathroom. Right? That's all that a person cares about throughout their day and their night. Right? The person who is like that is like what? He's like an animal. He's like a cow or like a sheep or like a dog, or like whatever. It's not acting like a human. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored human beings with intellects. And He has made them different from, he has made them different from predatory animals, and from dumb animals, and from shayateen, and from devils. And so, as we said, this is something that is going to play itself out in the story of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, and in the story of the children of Adam, 
sorry, of the children of Adam. The children of Adam, the scholars, they said that their names were what? The two sons of Adam. After Adam came to earth. Habil and Qabil, right? Cain and Abel, right? Habil and Qabil. What happened between them? Can you give us a short version? Please. It's almost time for the event. One of them did what to the other? One of them killed the other. Now, Hamza, why did he kill his brother? So he was what? He was what? He was jealous. He was jealous and he was angry. And he was angry. Every person that commits a sin, one of these four things is what drove them to commit the sin, right? So these things, they started right at that moment before even the incident where Iblis to refu- refused to make sajda for Adam. So let's take some benefit. Uh, well, we have like one minute. <laughs> let's take a little bit of benefit. A Shaykh Asadi, rahimullah ta'ala, he said, then after Adam was brought to life, Allah honored Adam how? By teaching him the names of all things. By teaching him the names of all things. So what made Adam special was knowledge. That Adam, alayhi salatu wasalam, had knowledge. And these are the names that Allah gave to the creatures. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the truest of those who speak. Tabarak wa ta'ala. And so by Adam knowing the names that Allah named the animals with, right? people can give names to things that don't mean anything. I can name that Paul Frank. That doesn't mean anything. Right? But when Allah wa ta'ala, assigns a name to something, that name means something, right? And so the basis of knowledge is knowing the qualities and names of things, the true qualities and the true names of things. So Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, was given something that made him different than the malaika and made him different than the jinn and made him different than the animals, which was a superior level of knowledge. A superior level of knowledge. That's why some of the Salaf, it was reported from Al-A'mash, Rahimullah Ta'ala. He said, لا تجانس الحيوانات Don't sit with people that are animals. He said, وَمَا الْحَيَوَانَات What do you mean by people who are animals? He said, الَّذِي لَا عِلْمَ لَهُ Don't sit with people, don't be friends with people, don't hang out with people that don't have any concern for knowledge, for learning their religion. And so, what makes a human being a human is knowledge of the truth. Knowledge of the truth. And this is what gave Adam alayhi salatu wasalam honor. And this is something very important because we live in a country, in a culture, where people are against intellectualism, against people being smart. And people, they enjoy stupidity. They enjoy entertaining themselves. They enjoy wasting their time. They enjoy staring mindlessly at a screen for hours at a time, bursting bubbles. They enjoy just turning their mind off. Just turning their mind off. And what makes us human, what makes us honored above the rest of the creation is knowledge. And we live in a time where scientifically people know more than people knew in the past. And religiously, We don't have to make the same type of effort to learn our religion that people had to make in the past where people had to travel to the ends of the earth and he travel on horseback or camelback or on the back of a donkey or on foot to learn the ahadith of the Prophet ﷺ. Now we have knowledge being broadcast on our cell phones. We have knowledge in our pockets. We have programs on our tablets and our computers and our phones that have 10,000 books from the books of Islam, the books of history, and the books of fiqh, and the books of any, whatever you can imagine. Knowledge is so easy. Knowledge is so easy. When you talk to the older generation, the generation of people who are our teachers, the people who are our teachers, when you spoke to that generation, especially people who were some of the first Muslims in America, and they talk about how difficult it was to learn the religion back then, how hard it was to learn Arabic, 
how hard it was to learn the Quran, how hard it was to learn the Hadith, how you had, at best you had bad translations of the books, and you had books that were translated by the Kufar, books of Islam that were translated and written by Kufar. Now what are you going to learn from a book like that? A book written by a person who's not even a Muslim to begin with, who's writing a book about Islam. And when you talk to people who grew up in that time, who came up in their religion at that time, and Allah bless them to be some of the first Muslims in America, it causes you to appreciate what we have today. And it causes us to feel bad about ourselves, that we're negligent, so on and so forth. So the point is what? The point is that what gives us honor in this world and the hereafter will be our learning the religion and benefiting from our knowledge. So this is the benefit that we take for today from the story of Adam alayhi salatu wa salam will continue next Sunday and next Monday. Insha'Allah, hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.